Welcome to the DC app video overview. So that's the DCS LFP app. Now, um, first thing you notice, there is a battery list and the app is just scanned for all the Bluetooth transmitters that are within range, uh, within a decent range, right? Nice and strong. And the closest battery is a 100 amp hour battery at the top of the list, which you can see here now, a negative 51 dB, so decibels. Um, the lower the number, the stronger the broadcasting signal is from the transmitter. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to the 100 amp hour battery. And we've got a successful connection. I'm going to turn all the charges on. And we're going to be charging up this battery and I'll show you all the features. So we've connected this brand new battery. Zero cycle, 62%. Now I'm going to be charging it. Uh, and I'll explain a few of the features. So going from the top, um, you've got the battery name or the model you've connected to. So across the top there, we've got um, DCS 12 volt 100 amp hour. And the battery's unique MAC address underneath it. So you know exactly which battery you're connected to. Uh, the MAC address sticker is found on the side of every single battery pack. So easy is to easiest is to memorize the last two digits. So 8B, or characters, and um, you, you can mark it on the top of the battery to know which one you're connecting to. If you've got multiple batteries in parallel. On a single battery, you should only have one battery in range. Scan for it, connect to it, and away you go. Now, this 100 amp hour battery is charging now at 97.9, so 98, so call it 100 amps. Um, the maximum charging current for our 100 amp hour batteries is 100 amps so while we do the overview video um, we'll just show you how easily uh, the high performance dcs marine batteries um, charge comfortably there at 100 amps um, now going down the list obviously standard charge um, as a percentage these percentages will climb up and down in one percent increments uh, depending on what you're doing and battery status so the battery status now we are charging the battery status or the BMS status um, is typically charging or discharging or standby um, also if there's any faults or errors logged by the BMS this is where it's going to show them next to the battery status okay so, so for example um, if you overcharge the battery it will tell you it's overcharged here if you um, completely flatten it down to 10, 11 volts, it will show you here that it's flat and it'll tell you to charge it. So battery status, at a glance, if you've got any issues, it'll tell you there. Otherwise, if the battery's all good and healthy, um, you'll have normal, normal status um, descriptions there. Uh, so voltage, so now we're charging 100 amp hour battery at 96.7 amps at 13.83 volts. So voltage, current and power so 1330 watts so we're charging at 1.3 kilowatts which is unheard of on a 100 amp hour AGM or gel or calcium battery um, lithium batteries are phenomenal and um, it's very little change in temperature even charging at its maximum charging power right now which is at 100 amps uh, time remaining that's the infinity symbol obviously because we're charging once we're fully charged, or once we put a load and we're discharging the battery, it will give us the time remaining here. Solar charge current. Um, for the solar enabled batteries, uh, here there is an additional shunt installed inside those batteries, the 90 amp hour hybrids and the 130 hybrids, with the solar, uh, solar shunts. Um, in the future we're going to release our marine batteries, so the 200 slims will have uh, solar regulators at some point in the future as well, so that information will come up here. Um, temperature. We run three different temperature sensors inside the DCS battery. So there is a um, BMS temperature, which is a transistor temperature. Um, we run a ambient temperature inside the case, and we also run a cell temperature sensor. So there's three sensors inside the backs, and this gives you the average of the three, the, the highest of the three values of the three sensors. This will give you the highest one, and it's typically going to be the BMS because you can't control the temperature of the cells. So um, this is always going to be a BMS temperature. So how hard the transistors on the battery management system are running, it shows you here. Now, 
at charging at 100 amps uh, we're just sitting there at 33 degrees so you'll see that temperature slowly climbing up as we charge this battery at maximum power and you can see the state of charge coming up in one percent increments uh, cycle count um, once you fully drain fully charge the battery um, that's one cycle obviously if you do uh, two 50% DEFA discharge cycles that will equal one cycle because 50 plus 50 is 100 and that will be one cycle so that that cycle count will dynamically count up uh, over time um, if you're running two of our batteries in parallel you can enable the DCS dual battery system switch and that switch will now give you the combined uh, supply readings that are coming in okay so you can see the current has jumped up there now to 193 amps um, because when you're in parallel each battery gets half of the amount of current so that enabling that switch gives you um, more accurate um, shunt readings obviously now this is a single battery so we don't want that enabled so that we know we're getting a true 96.4 amps reading okay so only enable that switch if you're running two batteries in parallel that's what that switch is for um, cell and balancing status so a 12 volt battery obviously four series connections so you've got four cells um, this is a brand new battery pack straight off the shelf at 100 amps you can see we're 47 45 47 44 um, very close there on the voltages and um, that will all balance up and trim up um, dynamically so because we run an active cell management system um, we do actually say balancing status here because you can see the cells actively balancing every time you charge the battery pack. So if you sat here and observed it and watched the battery at 100% state of charge, you would actually see what the cells are doing and how the BMS and the cell management system dynamically matches up those battery cells um, for absolute maximum service life and uh, also really good for engine starting because our battery management systems can engine start, um, you're getting uh, beautiful accurate data. Uh, through here now what we're going to do we're going to turn on a load so um, I'm just going to get a 2000 watt heater and I'm going to plug it in and um, we'll show you a couple of other features here okay so we're going to run a 2000 watt uh, I'm going to put a big load on our 2000 watt heater. So turn those charges off. Get that heater to switch on. Here we go. Okay, so 2.4 kilowatts. So 188 amps. Now keep in mind. Um, our 100 amp hour marine batteries run our uh, 150 amp continuous battery management system. So um, it's 150 amps continuous and we allow up to 200 amps of discharge current. So on a monster load like that, 2.3 kilowatts to 2,300 watts, at 185 amps, you can still see we're sitting at a quite a high voltage, 12.43 at a monster load. Um, and we've got about 22 minutes of running time. So the time remaining now is computed uh, based on based on the amount of load on the battery pack. Um, now we run a 2C charging rate on, our, on this particular marine range of battery. So um, they'll actually discharge at 200 amps. So you can run a you know, 3000 watt inverter. Um, you know, most commonly 2000 watt inverters. We'll do induction cookers and most stuff anyway. Uh, so now when I reduce the current to 92 amps, so one kilowatt of heating um, doubles the time remaining, so 44 minutes. So at 69% stated charge on a 93 amp load, you're going to get 44 minutes of running time. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It's a comprehensive um, monitoring program, which is part which is standard with every single battery we produce and gives you a lot of information, a lot of data. 